Hello there and welcome to Hawaii Volcanoes National Park on the Big Island of Hawaii. Uh, I am geology professor Sean Wilsey and I'm here with a group of students with a field geology course uh, exploring the island's unique geology, some of its landscapes. And we are currently on a hike down into the Kilauea Iki Crater, which uh, is a, an eruptive location from 1959. So we're going to take you on this little journey together down to the floor of the crater, look at some of the fascinating geologic features along the way, give you some insight as to how it all came to be. Um, and most of all, just hopefully bring you a little enjoyment through this little virtual excursion. Um, we're first dropping down through the dense rainforest uh, vegetation here to get down to the caldera floor. You can see how incredibly lush it is on this side of the island uh, with all the rain that they get here. These beautiful fiddlehead ferns um, that become some of the unique species here. So we'll get you guys to the bottom of the floor, the caldera, and then uh, see what we can learn and find down there. Okay, I worked my way down the trail to the floor of Kilauea Iki Crater. Just a fantastic view across the floor uh, of this crater and the immense basaltic lava that once covered this location. In the distance over here, we can see <clears throat> the eruptive vent for this eruption in 1959. This is called Pu'u Pua'i. So this hill was formed by a vent fountaining lava thousands of feet into the sky, up to 2,000 feet, basically a nozzle effect that allowed the lava to eject to considerable heights. That lava fell back down onto the landscape, draped the hill here, and we'll walk down there in a bit so you can see some of those features up close, but eventually filling this older depression with a large lava lake. This was actually once an 800 foot deep crater uh, and now it's only about 400 feet deep so it filled this pit about halfway up with a lava lake in 1959. We can actually see the high water mark or I guess it's not water the high lava mark uh, the ring the bathtub ring that surrounds the perimeter of this this lava lake and that indicates that at some point the lava drained back down so once the eruption was waning um, I believe the lava lake rose high enough that it actually was burying parts of the fountain or the vent over here. Um, and so eventually the lava supply waned and the lava drained down. And that's why you see a high bench on each side of the, of the crater floor on either side. That's pretty much where I'm standing here. You can see the, the dense uh, rainforest vegetation just behind me. So I'm at the high mark of this lava lake and as we look at some of the the textures in here of the terrain the the lava flows themselves um it's not exactly a true lava flow because the lava was just ponded in this depression it wasn't really going anywhere um forming this lake and so it's a little different than calling it pohoihoi or ah ah, but in general, because of the very high temperature of this eruption, well over 2000 degrees Fahrenheit, um, the lava here does have more of a smooth um, consistency, similar to what you'd see with pohoihoi flows. Um, one of the other telltale signs of these rocks and let's see if we can find one here is like a lot of Kilauea and even Mauna Loa eruptions the rocks here the lavas here tend to be very rich in in olivine crystals um, this one's here is, has so many of these vesicles gas bubbles a little hard to see oh here's one right here I don't know how well that'll show up but my thumb is right next to a nice little green glassy olivine crystal um, and so you can see that these Olivine crystals formed when the lava was underground for some period of time, started to cool and crystallize, at least initially, before the rest of the material um, erupted and those olivine crystals were just carried with the lava as the eruption took place. A um, couple big rocks here that looked grossly out of place. There's this large angular block here. Another one I just walked by back here, a couple in the trees here, and 
I've been over here before, so let's take a look at this. But it looks quite a bit different than the type of lava we see here on the floor. It's much more dense, um, lacks a lot of the vesicles, the gas bubbles we see. And so my geology spidey senses are telling me that we're looking at a rockfall event. So we had, after the lava lake drained at some point, we have cliffs back up in here and rocks have fallen off of some of these cliffs, maybe triggered by an earthquake, who knows, and tumbled down onto uh, the lava lake floor. As we can see, the, the nature and the characteristic of these are quite a bit different. So uh, pretty interesting. Again, you can see the, the bathtub ring, uh, tracing that ring around where the lava lake drained down a bit. So what we'll do next is we'll head back down to uh, the trail, walk across the crater floor, and then investigate some of the cool features over near the vent area near Puwa'i. So we'll see you over there across the Kilauea Iki crater floor here in a second. Alrighty, well we worked our way across the crater floor of Kilauea Iki. We started up here along the rim. I did a short video at the bottom here, just at the floor of the crater. And now we've hiked our way across the crater, um, heading to the, uh, I guess, heading to the east. Um, and now, or excuse me, to the west, west end of the crater. And now we're right beneath the big eruptive zone for this eruption that took place in 1959. This is Pu'u Pu'a'i. So Pu'u in Hawaiian means hill. Um, and so this large mound here is actually the result of the lava jetting from this area here. This is actually the eruptive vent. So the lava in this small constriction was being jetted upwards 2,000 feet into the sky. Lava falling back down onto the land, but because the trade winds were blowing in this direction away from me, just like today, more of the lava piled up on that side of the vent and that lava even though it flew up 2,000 feet into the air was still hot and molten as it landed and hit the ground and that lava um, stayed molten and flowed oozed slowly back down the hillside until it reached uh, the crater floor over here in fact if we work our way over to this side, you might be able to see some of the layering and some of the textural features that shows that this lava just sort of crept its way uh, downhill off of this mound here next to the eruptive vent. Uh, pretty remarkable. Uh, surrounding me where I am here, there's some of these uplifts and mounds in the, the foreground. There's one down here where these big slabs of, of busted up basaltic lava that have been sort of cracked and pushed upwards and these formed when the lava uh, from Pu'u Pu'a'i came down the hill and ran into the lava lake here on the on the crater floor so as this lava was coming down the hill it pushed on the hardened crust of the lava lake causing it to uh, be uplifted or pushed up in some places forming these these ridges or these mounds you see in places. And that's the primary reason you see so much of it uh, busted up. We can see again the nice um, bench, the, the high, high stand of this lava lake before it drained out, these sort of terraces uh, across the way here. Um, some other features over there were probably, maybe the wind had shifted and some of the lava had fallen onto that hillside and then oozed back down, flowed back down into um, the crater there. Um, let's see, well here's one of the cool things, I think, you know, it's mainly a geology focus here, but I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the incredible plant regrowth or what we call plant succession that takes place on these lava flows. So basically this 1959 eruption totally um, erased the canvas of whatever vegetation and life was here at the time. But since that time, we've had some of these rocks break down. We've got water and moisture in these cracks. And so we get these organisms regrowing. Here's a nice little fiddlehead fern, another one right here. So the fiddlehead ferns are regrowing from sort of the destruction of the 1959 eruption. And in other places, here's a young ohia tree that's growing out of some of these cracks. So along these cracks and fractures, it's where we see a lot of the regrowth 
from the plants in this landscape, uh, which is pretty remarkable. Uh, we'll walk over here a little further, see what the students are up to. I'm sure they're doing wonderful, studious things. Uh, they've actually been great, um, great group, really asking lots of questions, very curious, um, and having generally a really good time. Looks like a bunch of them have congregated just over here. But we can see here the eruptive vent, a little bit more oxidized, so you can see it's a little bit more red. And because it's somewhat sheltered in this little microclimate, probably holding a little bit more moisture, we can see there's quite a bit of plants that are regrowing around that vent there. So, um, but we'll go ahead and catch up with the group. Um, I'll run another section here, maybe once we get across the caldera floor. Um, but for now, this is the eruptive vent from the 1959 Kilauea Iki eruption here at Hawaii Volcanoes National Park on the Big Island of Hawaii. Okay, we're at the far side now of Kilauea Iki Crater. Just wanted to wrap up the video. Uh, one more view back across the crater along with Pu'u Pu'ai, the eruptive uh, vent, actually more like where the trees are sticking up here but the big pile of lava and spatter uh, that came down following the eruption. Um, hopefully you enjoyed this little trip uh, with me and my students, learning a little bit about this uh, eruption from 1959. Um, really a, a landmark eruption. There's so many great eruptions that have happened here at Kilauea, uh, but this one was quite memorable for those that were around at the time and studied it. So thanks so much for joining us on this little adventure. Uh, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. If you like the things I'm doing, just simple geologic low budget videos, uh, feel free to donate. There's a donate button on the banner of the YouTube page. There's uh, links under the video description um, where you can donate. And then there's also a, a thanks button uh, just below the viewer screen to the right where you can um, send some support if you feel so inclined. But for now, thanks for joining me, Sean Wilsey, on this just beautiful little adventure here in Hawaii Volcanoes National Park.